It's time for Good Energy, and I'm Dr. Julie, and welcome to Bodyful Day 376. We are talking about the dentist and the senses, and this is day five of Dentist and the Senses. And today we're talking about the kinesthetic sense, which means we're talking about the muscles and tendons and joints. And we're talking about how they stretch and move when we're at the dentist. So before we dig into all that good stuff, um, let's start with the basics. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and release deep breath in expand in the belly expand in the chest expand up into the head and release and we're talking about the kinesthetic sense and the dentist so have you ever left the dentist going eh, I, I, my jaw just does not not that it's numb because we're not talking about anesthetic we're just talking about like tension like your head hurts, your jaw hurts, it hurts. Go ahead and take a deep breath into that. And release. So today is day five of Dentists in the Senses. And up until now, we've, talking, we've been talking about things that for the most part, the dentist manipulates, but we also can manipulate a little bit so that we make sure that we have energy to heal because the dentist office is stressful and we want to get some good energy in. And there are some times when we cannot get energy to heal. Our stressors are going to overpower our good energy and no matter what we do, depends upon what we're getting while we're at the dentist. But anytime there's drilling, that period of time, if we were to just look at that period of time, like how much good energy in versus how many stressors you have, you are going to be going running negative on that. So it's always good that you have a lot of positive energy and good energy to heal before you go to the dentist if you're getting any procedures done. Now, today we're going to talk about the kinesthetic sense. And the kinesthetic sense sort of comes into play with a normal with a normal cleaning, but is more of an issue if you're doing more than just cleaning. So holding that mouth open, putting stuff in your jaw so that you can hold your jaw open in one particular area for a long period of time. The, even if the jaw is numb and you've kind of numbed out the nerve to that side of the face, if you've got something holding your jaw open over here, keeping the jaw open, um, you have a whole bunch of muscles on the side of your face that are going to go, uh-uh. That's like going to do yoga and stretching too far, holding it for more than two minutes. You are going to stretch and strain a muscle or stretch and uh, yeah, strain and sprain. Yeah, you're going to stretch and strain a muscle and you may even sprain a ligament or a tendon because you are holding your mouth open for that long. So there are a couple of places, let's say you've gone to the dentist. So there's not anything you can do while you're at the dentist. So time frame of being at the dentist, the kinesthetic sense, opening up that jaw and holding it open for a long period of time. You cannot add really any good energy in while you are at the dentist. But once you leave, you can add as much good energy in as you want based on muscle and working out trigger points. So when we think about trigger points, we think about little places in our shoulders and in our neck and in our back where there are just little punctate tight spots. Those can exist in your jaw muscles as well. And what happens in these little punctate tight spots is that there might be a little tissue damage from a, mus a muscle might be having a little tissue damage. And what happens is that inflammation then surrounds that because the body's trying to heal it, but it's inflamed. But unfortunately, the act of making inflammation in order to heal that tight spot makes more tissue damage, which then makes more inflammation, which makes more tissue damage, which makes more inflammation. And now you got this really hard, really hard knot in the side of your jaw. No, now you've got this really hard knot in the side of your jaw or in the back of your shoulders. So what can you do to decrease that pain? You can do ischemic compression. And we've talked about ischemic compression here before. It is holding a spot, putting pressure on it, and essentially either squishing out the inflammation or keeping oxygen from 
going into that spot, ischemic, meaning getting rid of oxygen, compression, that you've gotten it through compression, and you basically keep the oxygen or push the blood out of that tissue until the muscle goes, oh, hey, I give up, and it releases, and when you move your thumb away, there is no longer a knot in that part of your jaw. So you can do it in your back, you can do it in your any muscle on your body, but the jaw muscles are particularly tender because they are very thin muscles, but they can still hold so many trigger points. If you are at the dentist and you're holding your jaw for a long period of time, do not be surprised that you are going to have headaches, shoulder aches, toothaches, and uh, jaw pain just from having held your mouth open. Oh, and guess what? Remember our all of our discussions about the vestibular system? It's going to come back. The vestibular system gets messed up because the vestibular system gets information from the jaw. So when you have been sitting in the chair, we're going to talk about some of these muscles here. The first one is the masseter. The masseter just connects from here down to here. It is a very long, thin muscle that you can literally just kind of start underneath your cheekbone and look for trigger points. Just kind of push in there and say, hey, do I have a trigger point anywhere in there? Now, masseter is a pretty big muscle. You're probably going to find your trigger points up by the origin and the insertion, which is down along the bottom. So up by that cheekbone, down by the bottom. Um, you can also... I may have got my masseter wrong. My mas your masseter actually runs along the side of your jaw. So your masseter actually runs along the side of the ramus of the jaw. So you could actually push into there. You do have little muscles that do help with the jaw here, but they're not as important. But there is one if you follow the cheekbone back and to a spot called the zygomatic arch, which is this little part of your cheekbone right here. Um, right at, you get to back to that, not on your jawbone, but just in front of that. There is a tendon, and that tendon is the temporal tendon. And uh, let me tell you, this temporal tendon can cause a lot of problems because that temporal tendon has is the tendon that comes from the muscles that go all the way around your ear. And we've talked about these before. These, this muscle has two different layers, it, and everything attaches into your jaw just underneath that cheekbone. But because it goes under the cheekbone, and because it's attached up into the head, it can cause head, neck, jaw, and shoulder pain. Oh, and guess what? It can also cause eye pain. So one of the muscles that you really want to work, one of the tendons that you could work on is right here underneath the jaw, underneath the cheekbone. Or you could work on the muscle up above the ear. All right. That is the temporal bone. The masseter, you can work along the jawline and work up along this jaw muscle. There is also the internal and external pterygoid. Um, the internal pterygoid is kind of hard to reach by the, going inside your mouth, but there's an attachment point, which is just right underneath your jaw. So you can go, here's your jawbone. If you go just behind your jawbone and push up against, so like I'm going behind and I'm pushing up against my jawbone with my thumb like that, you will find one spot in there that just kind of jumps out at you, and it's probably about halfway right there. That is the attachment of the internal pterygoid muscle, and that allows your jaw to move sideways as well as up and down. And you can dig into that after you've been to the dentist for a long period of time because that's sort of a fine tuning. The external and internal pterygoids are fine tuned jaw muscles. The master is your big one open and close. Your temporalis is a big one. It opens and closes and also pulls your jaw backwards. Um, and so any of these can be out. And the one thing you've got to pay attention to is while you had your jaw open on one side, what might be causing issues is not the kinesthetic sense on this side. It may be the kinesthetic sense on this side. So you may have to work on the opposite side to relieve pain and issue tissue issues on the other side. So trigger point work through ischemic compression, especially after you've been to the dentist, is a great way to help decrease pain and sensory information coming from that kinesthetic sense. Because once you are loaded up on, uh, once you're loaded up on painkillers, it is very hard to tell what those muscles are doing. And you can strain and sprain, you can strain the muscles and you can sprain the tiny ligaments that exist in this whole area that can lead to facial pain, 
or to jaw pain, tooth pain, eye pain, shoulder pain, and headaches. All of those are really obnoxious. And you know what? They're not things that your dentist has any control over. They're trying to get their job done as quickly and accurately as possible. And if your mouth doesn't open up wide enough, they can't get that done quickly. So they will crank your jaw open, and therefore you are responsible for getting the good energy in that actually causes that to calm down. So feel free to poke in here around your face and up here around your ears after you visited the dentist because that will help with your kinesthetic sense. It will relieve the pain from strain and sprain happening in those small muscles and ligaments in and around your mouth. All right. I hope you have gotten a lot out of today's uh, today's live videos. Come back tomorrow. We still have the sense of touch and we have the vestibular sense. I'm probably going to talk about the vestibular sense tomorrow because we just talked about the kinesthetic sense and the, and the jaw. So we've got to figure out how all of that will go together. All right. I will see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day. Take care.